In this video, I'm going to give you some tips on how to apply for analyst roles, specifically how to structure your resume. And let's get started right now. All right. So this video actually goes out to Mickey Z. Mickey Z, I see his name uh, all the time. Mickey, if you're listening, thank you so much for watching uh, all my videos and taking my courses. I will continue to try and support you as much as I can. And I remember this uh, comment a month ago, and I had actually started working on this, um, but I can't find the video. So I'm going to do it again. Uh, in this one, I did the Tableau job interview and tips. Be sure to watch this if you're kind of not confident about how to actually go about interviews, which I've helped a lot of people with because they just never really done it before. Um, so watch that first if you haven't seen it. And then when you come back here, it goes, can you share a link or video on how you should format a resume in a text document? Okay, formatting is important, but that's really just for readability. Okay, so what font you use is usually kind of the standard, you know, Arial, you know, Times New Roman, all, all the kind of easy to read stuff. That's all well and good. I've seen resumes uh, when I'm like uh, hiring people or interviewing them that look really flashy, but then the content is rubbish. You know, it's like seeing a really good trailer for a movie and then you watch it and it's crap. So you're just disappointed. It's sort of like that. Whereas, you know, if you see a bad trailer and you're like, yeah, let's go watch it. And it's an amazing movie. You're satisfied. So you really want the content to be correct. And I see this mistake all the time that people make. So let me bring up Microsoft Word. So this is probably the first time you guys have seen me using Word. Yes, I do Word. I do more than just data. Okay, so here's the general structure. I mean, you have your name, you know, uh, you'll probably say analyst at the bottom, something like that, and then contact details. I mean, this is all pretty standard. You know, you have that kind of as a title, this one is a subtitle, and then your contact details of like, you know, phone, uh, email, um, phone, email, mobile, phone, mobile, something like that. People don't, I don't think people have home phones anymore, do they? Is that really a thing? Um, and then most important, this is one that people miss, your LinkedIn profile. You gotta put this in. This is kind of one of the first things that they do. This is your digital presence. So within the first 20 seconds of someone reading your name, probably even less than that, they're gonna Google you, figure out who you are. They might see your Facebook post, maybe they'll see your LinkedIn profile, the, you know, some of the businesses you've worked for, and that gives them an idea of who you are. If you can't even make a pass this stage, you're kind of screwed. So get this right, you know, maybe I'll do a whole nother thing on LinkedIn profiles um, of how to actually kind of go about that. So if you're interested in that, um, put a comment in this video and just say, link me up, or sausage link me up. Sausage link me up. Okay, and then I'll do a video on that. All right, so that's kind of like your first section. All right, so we'll put that kind of its own one. And then here kind of comes your main components. And this is the mistake I, I see people do. They'll start going on about what they have. Frankly, businesses don't give a crap about what you have. What they care about is what you can do for them. That's why they're advertising. They have a problem and they need someone to solve that problem. So if you can't show that in your resume, that you are uh, competent and skilled enough to solve that specific problem, they don't care. You are nobody to them. They don't care. That's It's a sad truth, but that's the way it works. So when you go experience, you know, or training, whatever you want to call it, you can't do this. You know, 2020, I worked for Commonwealth Bank. Um, prepared reports, you know, optimized uh, processing. You know, you can't have something like that because anybody can write that. What you need to show are results, right? How did you start with a problem? What did you do to solve it? And what was the outcome, right? And then what was the outcome in something that people understand? And majority of the time, the things that they understand is time or money which are kind of the same thing. So if you can improve on time, you can improve on money. If you can improve on money, well, then you're kind of reducing time. You know, they're kind of the same thing. Or resources, you know, like we needed less people to do something, which meant we could use those resources for other things to improve the business. All right. So here's how I approach any of this. Let's say I did work for Commonwealth Bank. You know, you have your standard Commonwealth Bank, your role, let's say I'm an analyst. And then things here... You don't want to just say, here's what I did. You want to say, here's what I achieved. So the method I use, let me bring this over. It's called the STAR method. And it's a very simple method. Um, my mother actually taught me this uh, very, very early days. Um, and if you're wondering, yes, she does data too. But she didn't teach me anything data-wise. 
Okay, she, I didn't even know she did data until I was very deep into my career. She's like, oh yeah, I know how to use an access database. So, um, but even then, she never trained me or taught me anything when it comes to data. So don't think that you know, like my parents were there showing me how to program. It's it's not the case. Um, I'm probably in a very similar situation to a lot of you. So going back to this, the star method, uh, situation, task, action, result. You don't have to structure it like this exactly, but this is a really good recipe. So situation, what was the problem you started with? Why are you why are you even spending time on this? Why is it a problem for the business you were working on? All right. So th something like, you know, to extract the data from the system took two days. Okay. That's your problem in that it took a long time. Okay. So what are the tasks at hand? Well, the task at hand is really to find a way to optimize, to reduce how much time it took to get that data to use less resources. So what did I do? All right, well, I employed a new system that allowed me to do it or I trained some people how to do it better or something like that. What was the result? Well, from two days down to one hour. That is a very measurable thing. And that's what people want to see. That's what employers want to see that you are actually able to start with something and achieve, achieve um, something from that. So let me show you how I structure it. Again, you don't have to use the exact same structure, but you can kind of put it as a story. Oops. You can kind of put it as a story. So for example, you'll say something like, um, uh, for the last five years, um, data extraction for the giraffe program, I don't know, for um, cybersecurity would take five days. Okay, that's your situation. Okay, the next one is your task. Um, this required um, five, five people per week to perform. This needed to be reduced to less people as well as um, shorter time frames as it was very resource heavy okay something like that this is kind of the general idea so the action was um i this is the times where you can just use the word i in business when you're working day to day you very rarely use the word i it's always we team us we you know like all together but in resumes it's you it's i did this even though yeah you're working in a team it's like i did this okay this isn't to say take credit for someone else's work okay I employed, uh, so I say I trained, I, I employed a new extraction system, uh, methodology and trained all users how to use it. After which we developed automation to do it automatically every day. Okay, this reduced processing time from five days to one day and own and didn't require human intervention. Okay. All right. So it's kind of, that's kind of it. That's it. You don't need all these dot points of all this stuff. For me, when I'm reading something, I'm like, what was this person able to achieve? Now, for example, if I'm, and you have to make this relative to the role. So I'm going to go through some roles in a moment. So for example, the role could be um, your, it's another company and they're having a lot of trouble doing data extractions and they don't know how to do it and they need someone experienced to do it. If they read this, it's like, oh, great. A person was actually able to see a problem, create a solution, um, implement it, and then measure it, which is very important. Anytime you do quality analysis, it's always about measuring it. If you can't measure it, you can't achieve it. Okay. So let's go through a few roles, um, but that's basically how I do it. And then after this, the rest is, you know, maybe you want to do education, but these are less important, um, especially these days. Like education is not as important anymore. Education, you know, hobbies, awards, that, 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 all that stuff. But really it's this stuff. This is really key. What have you achieved? All right. So let's look at a few roles. So what I did was I went into LinkedIn learning and I literally just typed in analyst because that's kind of where we all really start. So here is a graduate analyst, and this is how I would approach it looking for a job. So the beginning is usually, uh, we have a fantastic company, and we do this stuff, and we can do this, and we service a lot of people, and it's great, blah, blah, blah. You know, they, they paint a picture of, like, how awesome it is to work for their company. Cool. Standard. And then this is what they 
do when they say, um, here's what you'll be working. This is extremely generalized. That's why it's very difficult to write a resume or write an application purely from the job advertisement because they don't always tell you exactly what their problem is. And that's your goal. What are they, why are they advertising? Why do they need someone? If they need someone, there's a problem. But if they're not mentioning the problem, how it's, it's sort of like, you know, how, how are you going to be able to say, I'm here to solve your problem if they don't even say what their problem is? So if you have a, a, a job advertisement like that, you need to go and figure out what is their problem. All right. Um, okay, so let's read this. You'll spend time. Let me zoom in, actually. There we go. You'll spend time on the following. Co-facilitate workshops that gener generate customized business solutions. I don't even know what that means. You'll work in agile teams that facilitate organizational transformations for clients. Again, don't know what that means. Um, collaborate with teammates on the analysis and design of complex business applications using latest technologies. Tackle a variety of challenges. That's all very gray fluff speak. Doesn't mean anything, to be honest. What it really should say is we have a parts logistic problem in moving high volumes from one state to another in a one month time. That is very specific. So that's what you got to figure out. This is just fluff. Okay, here what we're looking for. Someone with 18 months. My advice, anytime someone says this is how much experience you need, just ignore that. Yeah, just ignore it. Because like if they go, oh, we need someone with five years, most people just go, oh, I'm not eligible. It's not the time frame of your experience. Because I've worked with people who have five years experience and they're rubbish. And I've worked with people who've had six months experience and they're geniuses. Like, you know, it's not the time frame. So every time you see this, just ignore it, ignore it completely. Okay, you have a practical approach to day-to-day -day story writing, line strategy. Okay, that's really just stakeholders. Client strategy. Anytime you see anything client, it's just stakeholder management. Um, root cause analysis and so on. But again, in terms of data, this is, there's nothing. So it's hard to write a resume. So what I do is if you go down here, you'll see, is there anything in terms of a contact number or HR or something like that? And if there isn't, what you do next is you go to this company, right? Sometimes it's a, uh, like a recruitment company. Call them directly, say, I saw this job, etc., etc. Sometimes they won't mention the company, but then they'll mention why they're hiring. Yeah, but they just won't put it here. That's what you got to figure out before you apply. If you don't know what it is you're applying for, don't even waste your time applying, in my opinion, uh, because the odds of you getting it is just, just, you know, it's just luck, you know, and you really don't want to apply and waste your time purely on luck. You want this to be a very strategic approach to acquiring a job that you are fit for. Okay. All right. So if it is a company, for example, ATO, so the Australian tax office, for example, this one, they have a little bit more detail going in, but again, still a lot of relatively a lot of fluff. Um, you want to go in and go, why are you guys hiring? What is it exactly you're trying to solve? And the other advantage of doing it this way is once you know exactly what they're trying to solve and you put that in your resume in this kind of layout, and you put something extremely close to what they're trying to solve for. When it comes to recruiting or interviewing process, imagine you're the person interviewing. You have five resumes in front of you. One of them is very specific to what you're dealing with. The other four people probably just saw the ad and just applied, and that's it. So any edge you can get against your competitors, that's what you got to do. Right, you got to think of, us, of yourself as an Olympic athlete. Any edge you can get, you got to take it. That's how you get jobs. You have to do what the other person is not willing to do. Obviously, keep it legal, but that's how you get jobs. That's also how you rise up the ranks in business. If you're working in a company and you have four or five other programmers or analysts, and there's a role that you're looking for, or there's a rank you're looking for, or you want to move up, or you want to upskill, whatever, think about well. What are they not doing? You know, what can you do more? What can you do in addition? That's how excellent people become excellent. It's not by luck. You know, it's not because they knew someone. It's just that people who are excellent work hard and they do the things that need to be done. They don't always like it, but it needs to get done. So I'm getting off topic here. It's just I'm really passionate and interested in this kind of uh, thing. So from here, um, you're pretty much set. The other advice I would give you is if you're one of those people with five page resumes, just stop, please stop. Two pages maximum, maximum. If you can get it down to one and a half, 
great. If you can get it down to one, even better. But it needs to contain all the information that the reader needs to know, right? Without completely overwhelming them. You know, less is really more. You got to respect their time in reading this and only give them stuff they need to read. I remember interviewing this one guy. His resume was like three quarters of a page, but it was exactly what I needed to know. And within 20 minutes after the interview, we had hired him simply. And that wasn't for an analyst role necessarily, but he knew what needed to be solved. He knew why we were hiring. He only put the things that were relevant to that role. And that's why even halfway through the meeting, I, I think I looked at other interviewers and we said pretty much, yeah, get him. He's good. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's here for. Okay. So I'm going to leave it there for now. If you want more information or you want to know more specific things or you want more examples or you have a particular job advertisement that you've seen, you want me to have a look at or whatever it is, get in touch, drop me a comment. I would love to hear from you and kind of mentor you and coach everyone to really succeed in this industry. And especially for those people who are like nervous people, don't really, don't really know how to talk to people, don't really know how to write, all those kinds of people, please get in touch with me. I will help you along the way so that you guys can really succeed in this field. It's the best field ever. So that being said, have a great day and bye.